Is it immoral to be selfish? Welcome to Philosopher's Corner. I'm John. Is it immoral to be selfish? Well, the standard definition of selfish is to place one's own values and self above the needs of others. And it can lead to the point of others' detriments. And selfish has a negative connotation. When people think of selfish, uh, they think of someone even more than selfish. They usually think of someone who's narcissistic or sociopathic or solipsistic, which means that you think you're the only person who exists in the universe. And in those circumstances, uh, under those understandings, yeah, being selfish is immoral. But it's much more complicated analysis than that. Because as we go through life and, you know, we really remember what Immanuel Kant was talking about with his categorical imperative, which essentially says that once a person becomes aware and they start becoming the author of their own value system and they start making decisions based on their discernment, of morality and immorality and the balances that come into the relationships with those decisions and judgments that, you know, they become responsible for the management of sort of the web of morality that they become and that any choice that they make that is immoral is inherently irrational. Because a person that's arrived at that point of discernment that can tell right from wrong, good from bad, moral from immoral, and they're exercising their free will to do it, which really making moral choices is one of the validations of your free will, if not the most important one. When a person's arrived at that point, they'll find out that making an immoral choice is making an irrational choice because the decision to make the moral choice is something that can be arrived at through reasoning and thus it makes it the rational choice and that when proper analysis is done the immoral option will obviously be rationally incorrect it'll be based on emotion or other irrational principles and just in the once you do the final analysis of it the immoral choice will be determined to be an irrational choice once you've attained discernment and so to Kant once you become rational and reasonable and you can reason things and you have your free will kicking in then you'll continue to make the moral choices because they're the rational choices. They'll produce the most good, they'll, they're the right choice for the moment, they keep the vibes good, all those things. A whole bunch of things come out of it. So when it comes to being selfish, and we look at it and we say, well, there's many kinds of selfish. And really, at a certain point, everyone is selfish. Because it means placing the value of a decision in the moment, weighting the outcome for yourself as the most important outcome as you weigh it with the other decisions that are facing you in that particular moment. And it can last for a while. And it's even fair to say is being self-centered immoral. And in and of itself, no. Because in and of itself, each of us is an individual. And by enacting our agency and living our life, we are inherently being self-centered. To some degree, we are all being selfish. Now, it's a balancing act. If you're being selfish to the degree that... It is making you 
not be able to fulfill obligations that you entered into to have moral implications with other people, you know, then it's immoral. And in terms of Kant, you can reason that out because you know that if your selfishness or your self-centeredness in relation to your relationships of these balances that are occurring between you and others or you and, you know, it doesn't have to be individuals, it can be organizations or animals or concepts or whatever it is, the thing you have a relationship with. If your determination to become self-centered and place your needs above the needs of your other relationships disrupts the balance and the harmony of those relationships to such an extent that they become dysfunctional, then yeah, then it's become immoral. And that falls in line with Kant saying like, well, at that point, it's an irrational decision because those relationships are part of you. They're, they've become part of your life. And so in a way, if you become selfish to the extent that relationships that are, especially ones that are healthy for you, which would make it moral and rational, are being disrupted or altering the fundamental nature of those relationships because you're being selfish, then you know your selfishness is getting to a point where it's immoral and it's, and it's creating negative effects in lives. Now, that being said, and also the fact that like, if you're knowingly doing that, if you're being selfish to the point where you're knowingly exploiting relationships with people for your benefit, with only your benefit in mind, then you for sure know that that is a version of selfishness and being self-centered that is immoral. Now on the flip side, it would seem that there are many moral reasons to be selfish or self-centered for stretches of time. Self-development requires being self-centered or selfish for a while to put the needs of yourself to make yourself healthy, to make yourself grow. You know, under, under real analysis, it could be said that any person who's ever entered a monastery or entered into the monastic life is basically committing the most selfish act possible. Now, in their case, the idea, the hope, is that they're entering into a period of such self-centeredness with an aim of becoming altruistic that eventually the fruits of the process will positively affect multitudes. The idea is that they can enter into a period of such selfishness with the goal of attainment of usually spiritual vistas where they can then be of more service to others. That's the idea. But in terms of the action itself, People who enter, enter into monastic life, you know, monks, nuns, uh, yogis, gurus, those types of people, they're essentially telling everyone in the world that their self-development is the most important thing possible and that it trumps any other relationship they have in their life. And it can be particularly selfish because they're telling people who are in the material world that their ethereal, invisible, unseen relationship with the ether or God or the spiritual realm, or at least the intellectual realm, surpasses all of their real relationships and obligations to flesh and blood people. And that they're so committed to it, they're going to sever their life completely from the material realm, essentially. 
and go to a place or go to a situation or create a life path for themselves that allows them to be exclusively self-centered and selfish. But they have an idea that at some point they might be able to be of more service to everyone. But there's no guarantee of that and not everyone who enters into that achieves that status. You know, many people do that and then it doesn't really pay off. You know, so in that sense, those people, it's, it's one of, you know, it's one of the heights of selfishness to simply devote one's entire time to the development of oneself and to go to a place where they're isolated from everybody to do it, to renounce all other people's <laughs> values and meaning and crushes people when people disappear to do that. So that's a, and that's a case of positive selfishness because those people are hoping that by engaging in lengthy selfishness, they can come back and be altruistic to some degree. As opposed to the traditional ideas of selfishness when we think of them are really just people that are oblivious to the needs of people around them. Or, even worse, they're manipulating people around them by knowing what their values are and knowing what they need and knowing what the relationship is on them. They could have people codependent on them. And they just decide that they want to be selfish for much pettier means than enlightenment or altruism. They're just trying to get by on the day to day. And they've just decided that the enjoyment of their experience is paramount in their life. And so they've subjugated everyone else in their life to essentially feed their material hedonism. And of course, that's immoral when that occurs. And it's even more immoral if somebody confirms that they're aware of it. And we can see that with all, all sorts of people. And I'm sure everyone that's seen this has encountered somebody that's done that. And that creates, in the real world, you know, people will talk about those people. You know, that's where gossip comes up or rumors or reputations are born. You know, reputations are, they're fair, they end up usually being fairly accurate representations of the person's intentions and whatever their moral standing is. And depending on how selfish or self-centered the person gets, the reputation, the intensity, the reputation, and the value of it typically propagates proportionally. Now, all that being said, there are times when it's necessary to be selfish and self-centered. There's lots of times where it's, where in fact some people who refuse to enter in any self-centered or self-ish modes because they think that any version of it is immoral. You know, those people can lose themselves and those people, it can be very detrimental to not acknowledge the human need. There is an inherent human need for it because when you enter into meditation, when you enter into periods of solitude, and you concentrate on self, you need to be able to be self-centered. You need to be able to selfish for periods of time in order to heal yourself, in order to find out who you are. I mean, if one of the greatest maxims in philosophy is know thyself, well, you can't know thyself if you've completely sublimated yourself to a collective for your whole life. Knowing thyself is not... I'm, U I'm unit 137 in collectivist region 357 of the northwest region of, you know, my totalitarian life. Or, you know, my name is XYZ in a spiritual commune and I don't have any individual agency and, you know, I farm beets for the 
commune uh, and I'm never allowed to think about myself because because uh, everybody else's needs are equal or the same as mine and then all of a sudden that doesn't mean anything because all there is is the individual there's a collective consciousness but there's no collective self and so that can be a trap that people fall into if they say oh well there's never a good time there's never a moral way to be selfish or self-centered when in fact there are it's requirement of life to have a balance of life. It's like most things in life, there's there's a balance to it. There's a there's this waves. There's you know peaks and troughs. Just waves. Everything propagates in waves. In fact, if you're trying to be altruistic, if you haven't been selfish or self-centered for periods of time and explored yourself as an individual to know what an individual is because for human beings it's a universal setup like it doesn't matter where you're born doesn't matter what you're working with if you're a homo sapien your psychology works pretty much the same way your biology works pretty much the same way your spirituality works pretty much the same way it's a universal condition we all sort of get the same operating hardware and so to know thyself and when you get to know yourself as an individual, superficial, you know, superficially, biologically, spiritually, intellectually, all these different ways, all those lessons are applicable to other human beings as well. So in terms of, well, if you're saying, I want to avoid being self-centered or selfish because I have, you know, I want to be altruistic. Well, you can't be altruistic until you know yourself. For a lot of reasons but chief among them you're not really going to get to know how other human beings feel and operate until you know how you are because because no one can escape if you're a human being you can't escape being a human being so once you get to know yourself then you can know other people and you can know what other individual needs are and you can really have a more complete feeling of empathy and compassion and all these things that lead to other charitable intentions so people who allergically repel self-centeredness are actually making themselves less useful to other people in the same way the people who are compulsively selfish and veer into narcissism solipsism all these other extreme levels of self-importance um, are also not necessarily useful to other people right but there are periods where you need to be you need to be both to have the balance because most of us most of the time we're just kind of living somewhere in between you know so we're living in some kind of balance of like oh well i need this today or like oh i need to help that person and like well you know most most reasonable decent people are going through life and they're not just always thinking about themselves um but when you do one or the other too much thinking about yourself too much, you think about everybody else too much, fall out of balance. But you do need access to both perspectives for to be a complete full spectrum human being. I mean, there are long, I mean, how are you going to live your life if you don't know what you like? And how are you going to know what you like if you don't spend time with yourself being selfish? You got to figure out what your abilities are, what your tastes are, what your likes are, where your limits are, all these things. And you really can't avoid, there's not really an effective way to find those things out without being, for periods of time, what people would call selfish. You know, if you look at anybody in high school and you look at how much time they spend on themselves in a day, well, they're at school all day, that's basically all time spent on themselves. And, you know, maybe they have extracurricular activity, that's all time spent on themselves. And they go home and do homework, well, that's basically all time spent on themselves. If you look at a high school student, they're basically spending all day on themselves. And nobody looks at an average high school student and says, oh, look, look at that selfish kid. You don't look at students and say, oh, look how selfish all these students are. They're just in there. They just spend all day developing themselves. Like, what a bunch of selfish people. Um, because there are periods in time where you need to be selfish for self-development. Uh, so that in other aspects of your life, in other time frames of your life, you can fit in with other people, you can relate to people, you can help people. You can't help people if you don't know how to help people.
And you can't help people if you don't respect yourself as a person. That's another thing. All of these moral intentions should be practiced on oneself first. You got to learn to love yourself. You got to learn to be, have compassion for yourself. You got to learn how to judge yourself. Oh, did it, was this thing I do? Was it immoral? Was it moral? You know, all these things that you have to do in order to construct yourself and build yourself and author yourself require periods of being self-centered, being selfish, and eventually solitude when you become a pro at it and you don't have any of these hang-ups about it and you can really just examine yourself and be with yourself and operate yourself sort of like a general manager uh, or be the CEO of yourself, have your own board meeting with yourself internally. Um, yeah, you, you got to enter into these areas of self-awareness. You know, and that is self-centered. It is selfish from the outside. It doesn't matter how much on eggshells you try to walk about entering into periods of self-development. From the outside, it's always going to look like selfishness. And as we were discussing earlier, sometimes if you don't keep a good balance on how much solitude or self-centeredness you spend, then yeah, you can veer off into things that are immorally too much about yourself your value becomes too much about you and your value system becomes too propagated on or too weighted on just like very personal tastes so you can't be walking around the world just going oh the only thing that matters today is like if i get strawberry ice cream and that's the only thing <laughs> like all you do is walk around all day all month all year just going man all that matters is if john gets strawberry ice cream that's the only thing that matters today like that's an out of whack value system Right. And some people do that. You know, the obvious one is with money or power and people just walk around all day. Oh, if I just if, if, as long as I have all the money or as long as I get all the money I need <clears throat> or if I if I get all the power I need and, and then everything's fine and there's nothing else and there's no distribution system on the other side. It's just me, 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 me all day. If you, if, you know, if you've gone through these periods of development and you've gone through these periods and you get to a period usually later in life when you when you're satisfied with whatever level of personal development you're at to a large degree, if your if your value system, if the first, you know, five things on it are all me, 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 um, yeah, you're probably out of balance. And so really when it comes down to this question of if, if is it immoral to be selfish, it comes down to balance, overall balance. Is it okay to be selfish in certain spurts? Uh, and it's and Sometimes it's not okay to be selfish in certain sports, but it is necessary to experience it, and it does have utility. The question becomes, when does it become out of balance? And in that case, that's why being in reality is important. People go, oh, well, what's, you know, what's the meaning of life? Well, the meaning of life is to... be a student of it and understand it and have emotional investment in it and understand that the other people and things and the reality itself are there for an interactive experience of that. The whole experience is self-development, right? So I think if you spend enough time in solitude or meditation or being selfish or self-centered and you have that idea about reality being a, it's a co-creative reflexive interactive thing that you're in and that you're, really fortunate to be in then when you come out and you're inter interacting with it then i think that, that can make you that can make your value system more balanced so that you can be secure i think when people get into imbalanced versions of selfishness they're just being insecure the security comes from knowing that you're rooted in the life experience and that that's already very self-centered like having a body and having a perspective and a free will is already extremely self-centered. It's it's like a baseline of selfishness to have a body and a point of perspective. And especially once you've had a period of development to be able to figure out some of the things about yourself and your value systems and whatnot, then when you go out into reality, it's all gravy because all of your interactions with it are self-centered. It doesn't matter how altruistic you get. Because once you're in a body, it is a self-centered experience. There's no, you can't remove that. Even if as transcendental as you get, as much as your meditation gets, as altruistic as you want to be, as non-self as you want to get to, 
you're still doing it from a point, a singular perspective of your consciousness. What even if you go out of your body and you're just floating around as your little light self out of your body as just pure consciousness, you're still doing it from a singular point of perspective that is you. There's no escaping the self-centered nature of you. It permeates all the way down to the soul level. It's because the reality itself is set up for the individual experience. So it's not immoral inherently to be aware of and cater to the individual experience. It's, just, it's a matter of balance. And the reality will let you know when that balance is good or when that balance is not good. And I think that's the real trick to it. That's the real key to it, is a better way to say it, is that you have to maintain a sense of balance. And that comes from feedback from people, from things, from your own internal emotional system. There's a number of ways to figure out the navigation of the balance of it. But that really is the key to it. So it's, it's not that you have to always avoid it or that if somebody says, hey, I think you're being selfish. Like, it's not every time like, oh, well, I guess I'm a terrible person. Um, but you got to take it in. And especially if you hear it, if you hear it from trusted people or if you hear it from more than one person or you're just getting results back to go, oh, man. Then you got to sit down and go, okay, maybe, maybe I am. You got to examine it and make adjustments accordingly or determine that like, no, that's, that's this period of time that I'm in and I get it. And when I come out of this, we'll get back to the value system being more balanced. But, but yeah, that's sort of, that's sort of the balance of things. So is being selfish immoral? There we go. Well, thanks for spending some time here at Philosopher's Corner. I uh, hope you found it helpful. Feel free to make your own videos. This is philosophy. It's open source code. So I encourage you to do that. It's good to think and get your, get your perspective out there. Have fun.